Okay, hello. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our last class of the semester. Mm. That's sad. It is really sad. We are finally at the end of the semester. This year has been different. It has been interesting. We, all of us, we have been learning different things about life, about living uh, indoors most of the time about getting enclosed. So, um, but we have learned, we managed to learn. So this is our Seminario de Conversación en Inglés, English Conversation Seminar Class 1. Um, intentionally, I didn't put the number one there because you're gonna see at the end of this class, I'm gonna explain something. Uh, okay, so let's just start. This is the final part of unit Unit four, unit four, which is conversation, dialogue, speaking, and so on. So uh, let's just move forward and keep going. Here's the thing. Uh, we've been talking about conversation. We've been talking about speaking. We've been talking about uh, having a dialogue with someone. Last time we talked about formally speaking and informally speaking, and that you could encounter differences. And most of the time, if you are at the job, at the work, if you're talking with a superior person, you want to keep the conversation formal. If you're talking to your peers at the same level, well, you want to keep the conversation formal, but it could turn into informal because that people at the same level and the people that work in your teams, they become your friends and if you work there for some time, like years, they become part of your family also. So it's more about informally, but here's the thing. Why are you looking through this picture right now? Because if we're talking about work, today we're gonna talk about work conversation, but not the same type of classes that we have the last few times that we were talking about conversations and dialogues. Today, we speak about having experiences, having different experiences at the job. So that's why I chose this picture. And every picture in the PowerPoint presentation that you're going to have in the platform, you have, as usual, the links, how to get to that picture and who was the author. Uh, it, it always comes as, um, we don't know the name, but we have a link and we can go through the pages from all of those uh, out there. Okay, so here's the thing. Being an engineer and being an industrial engineer, you're going to encounter different situations in your regular life and in your professional life. So sometimes you're going to have to talk about tools. That's what you're looking right now, tools. So it doesn't matter if it's a screwdriver, if it's some pliers, different pliers. Um, so different tools that can help you build or unbuild, construct or deconstruct something. You have to know the vocabulary about this. How are you going to ask for the certain tools or for another type of tool? So here's the thing, in your normal area, you're going to encounter not just tools, but machines. And the machines have a different purpose. They were designed for a different purpose. If you take a look at the picture that you are looking at right now on your left, you can recognize those machines, right? But the question is here, do you know the name of those machines? and the parts of those machines. And then we have uh, like the picture on the right, when you are actually looking at me, um, you have different type of machines. Those are bending machines where you can have some articles. You don't work with them. You ask them to give you a product, but somebody has to design them and somebody needs to control them also. And the picture at the, uh, the middle, you also have machines. And those are not like the ones in your left. 
those are robotic machines. They are controlled uh, in a different way. So uh, automatization, pieces, parts, materials, all of that, uh, you need to understand the vocabulary if you want to talk with the people or the person working with these machines using those tools. You are not a, a mechanic person. You are not going to be fixing them, but you may encounter yourself in between that fixing of them or the design of them. So you need to learn more about the vocabulary about that. And you can also have conversations while working in a control room. Yes, some of you may have different jobs and some of you may end up working in a control room where you have buttons, you have, of course, a telephone like the person in the left picture. And again, you can go back and talk to the phone. Remember, phone conversations, if it's a good job, you must keep them formal. Yes, that's, that's a certain thing. And if you want to keep a conversation fast because you're working, of course, you want to keep it just formal, okay? So you may have conversations about this, about all of the controls, about the orders that you need to give in a control room, about programming in the control room, about directing in the control room. You may find yourself, I wish for you, all of you, to be part of a management position sometime in your life. So you may need some more vocabulary to be able to get a conversation in management. Of a quality, yes. Remember that the last name of your profession that you're getting in Universidad de la Sierra, you are studying in those Engineering in Productivity and Quality. Actually, the title is in Spanish. Ingeniería Industrial en Productividad y Calidad. So quality will always be present in your life. If you, it doesn't matter what type of company you work for or if you own your own company, your own business, you're also going to need to talk about this vocabulary and you need to relate to the people in this vocabulary of course listen to this a conversation is not just about words it's not just about knowing about vocabulary it's about knowing about grammar and how to use that grammar but hey good news you are you have already studied grammar english grammar for more than at least more than nine years of your life so by now, you should be grammar expert. But yeah, reality says, yeah, I know, I know. In reality, grammar is difficult and you need to continue studying to be able to know more about grammar and to be able to use it correctly. But it's all about practice. One thing that we, uh, we should gather from last class, we should remember, last class we say, Get, get ready. It doesn't matter if you're nervous. Make mistakes. Make mistakes, but speak. You need to speak. In a conversation, you need to speak. You need to talk. There is no conversation, not oral speaking without speaking. There's no logic on it. So you need to lose that fear. And here's the thing. If you make mistakes, still the other person, the other people is going to be able to understand what you are saying. So you need to lose that fear. And in terms of uh, terminology, vocabulary, about quality, quality control, management, good thing that while you were studying through your university, through all of your courses, there is also a lot of terminology, a lot of words that you have been learning, that you have been gathering from the books, from your classes, from your professors, even if your class is in Spanish, there is a lot of terminology that we already use in English. And that's good news because you are already related to the vocabulary that is needed to be used. 
So here's the thing, I needed to include quality and, and, and quality control, and of course, the quality systems management, but I'm also including the logistics because it's part of what you're going to be doing. So here's the thing, uh, we could be talking about airports, we could be talking about a port, we could be talking about containers, we could be talking about um, going in a, a big truck, the 18 wheelers, uh, we could be talking about a warehouse, a different size of warehouse, we could be talking about the, the cabinets or lockers. So it's a lot of vocabulary that we already know, but we need to put it into conversation. So that's the great thing. You have the grammar, you have vocabulary. Now we put it into action. How do we do that? We practice. How do we practice? Well, we have friends, we have family members, we have classmates, we have professors that you can speak with, so you practice. Uh, you could also be a part of maintenance in, in any company because you're ready for that. Next semester, you're going to have a class that it's all about maintenance. And a lot of students end up doing their internship in something related to maintenance, which is pretty cool, huh? It's really nice because you learn, you, you get to learn about machines and about programming the uh, maintenance, which is really very interesting. Things like here, like, like what it says here, preventing maintenance can reduce machinery repair bills by 25%. Yeah, that's the reality. Um, there are different types of maintenance and you're going to be learning about that. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, here in the area that we are from, we're used to see, uh, at least, and that's a good thing, we're used to see these images. These are from different mines. We know about these super big trucks. Uh, we know about a leaching processes, flotation processes. You are not experts, I know. You are industrial engineers and even a chemical engineer as me. I'm not an expert on those topics because to be expert, you need years and years of experiences, but at least we know the basics. We know the foundation for it. And if you're going to end up working in a mine, like I said last time, last week, last, last, last class that we had, you're going to end up talking with someone in English, especially if you're working in a mine. The market for this, the clients for this are from all around the world. So sometimes you may have a people, some people from China coming and asking you something. And it's easier because of the roots of Spanish are the same roots of English. It's easier for you to learn English than to learn Mandarin, Chinese. And thankfully, it is the language that is spoken in most of the world. And gratefully, you already know the language. Congratulations for that. You may be working in a manufacturing facility. We could talk about cellular manufacturing. We could talk about some um, automatic manufacturing. We could talk about different types of machine, textile, um building automobiles building uh having a clean room having different protection equipment and so on so many different things that we can talk about being an engineer and being a normal regular person normally day conversations at the job and simple very simple conversations or more professional conversations. It will all depend on the situation all of the time. You may encounter yourself in the future being part of design. Let me just tell you, and I'm telling you in the future, but your nearest future is happening about in two months in your ergonomics class, you're going to be designing something. So, uh, and all of the designing programs, if we're talking about software, if you put that, mindset into a software, 
everything is in English. Thankfully, you already know the language. Good. And you can have the conversation with your peers, with your classmates about this type of design. And of course, productivity. If we're talking about quality, we have to talk about productivity. You're going to be uh, part of an office. You're going to be part of a team. You're going to be calculating. And uh, the main objective of uh, an industrial engineer is to look for efficiency. Find more efficient ways to do the job. So you're going to encounter, you're going to find yourself uh, calculating, getting all of the process to be more efficient. Good, congratulations for that. That's a great thing that an industrial engineer has. And here it is. Uh, here's where I wanna get to. Uh, today I'm recommending some web pages to visit so you can practice more about dialogue. Uh, I'm only recommending very few. I have more that are my favorite ones, but uh, to close to close this topic about conversation, I chose this one. So you can practice over your break, over your vacation time. Since you're going to be at home this Christmas time, you're not going to be traveling anywhere not to another time because we have a pandemic problem and it's increasing. So it's not decreasing. Um, yesterday, uh, the, the news yesterday in, in Sonora were pretty bad, really, really bad. So it is not going down, but we have good news. The, the shots, the vaccines are getting ready. So uh, there is a good future for next year. Uh, we don't know when, but we're gonna get vaccinated. Okay, so going back to the topic, I'm recommending these four different web pages. Uh, number two and number three, the TEFL Tastic and ESL right now, those are blogs from WordPress. WordPress is a really cool uh, place for blogs that is basically about publishing and publishing good stuff. Most of the stuff that I've seen in those uh, pages is, is about learning, is about academic stuff, which is pretty good. So uh, I have used the TEFL statistic. I have used it before for vocabulary. And so I want to recommend you to go there. I'm gonna show you those web pages after I close this one, but I want you to uh, take your time during this break, during the Christmas break, before you start your eighth and last semester of your university courses. So uh, I'm, I'm strongly, strongly, strongly recommending you that you go there. Why? Because of this, I have a surprise for you. Seminario de conversación en inglés, dos. Dos. Oh yes. my God. <laughs> yeah, that was a surprise. Now nah, you already knew that you have a second class, of course, yeah. But here's the thing. We close this class talking about dialogues, talking about conversations, and you have a conversation going on right now this week with somebody that is not your classmates or not your professor. Somebody that is your friend, your family member, somebody from other town, I don't know. You are recording a conversation through this week, which is great. It is very good because uh, the intention was to practice conversation. But here's the thing, we had another class, English Seminar Conversation 2. And I'm strongly recommending you to go and study because this class, the, the, the English Seminar 1, we were speaking a lot in English, but I was speaking a lot. Your professor was speaking a lot. Next year, which is for next semester, you, you have your last chance to practice. So you're going to be doing a lot of speaking and a lot of writing. We're going to learn more about writing in a formal way, which uh, it's used uh, different ways of grammar. We use passive and active voice. So we need to learn about that. We're gonna write paragraphs and then we're gonna write bigger paragraphs of like abstracts. 
and then we're going to write a, a whole report in English, of course. And it's not about using, or it's not just, I, I know that you are going to tend to use a translator engine, a translator, but it's not just about translating something because it doesn't really make sense. It's not written in the same way as Spanish. So you need to learn how to write in that way. And, and yes, you're gonna be practicing more. And second unit of that class, we're going to talk about the job interview. Job interview, job interview, yes. Because finishing May, starting June, you're going to start your internship to Estadía Profesional. And in this class, we're gonna be helping you in English, of course, on how to get to the job, uh, the job interview. We are going to be interviewing you. We are going to gather examples and you're going to be interviewed um, and so on. So it's, it's really going to be in an interesting course. You are going to talk more. So yes, English Conversation Seminar 2. All right, so that's the thing. That's, that's our class for next semester. And then you're gonna say like, hey, professor, but hey, what's going on? Uh, you closed your, your, your slides, your, your visual aids. Uh -huh. Because like I said, I'm going to show you the web pages that I'm recommending you today. And I'm recommending you, it's very few, uh, and, and you can just go and repeat and repeat the information. But I'm strongly, strongly recommending you that information so you can practice and so that you don't forget your English. Don't forget what you already gather and what you already understood. And don't forget the fun, the fun part of a language. So here is, I'm gonna share with you the web pages. Let's see, uh, here. This is the one that I found as a favorite one not just because it comes like in pink, <laughs> pink, uh, purplish, some, something like that. Doesn't like, sort of like favorite color for me, like something pinkish. Um, but anyways, that's not the topic today. Uh, this, this is the first web page that I'm recommending over there, uh, uh, today's class. It's a page, this is not from United States and this is not from um, England either. I found this web page by looking for something through uh, by surfing online. This is from Vietnam. Uh, what you see over here, the the whatever it says over there, it's it's not Spanish, it's not English, it's Vietnam. But why did I choose this web page then? Because it's English. And here's the thing. Sometimes it's better to learn. English as a second language from other people that are also learning or that are also uh, in the process or that are also teaching as a second language because they tend to understand more the struggles that we suffer when we are learning. This is the thing. If we get an opportunity to speak with someone from a different country, I'm gonna try that. I'm not promising anything. I'm gonna try that for next semester uh, because I have friends from some different places in the world. I'm gonna try to connect with some of them uh, through classes and see uh, how you can understand them because the pronunciation, the way they speak, it's very different. And like I was saying, I was giving you an example. If you work in a mine, you may encounter yourself speaking with a Chinese person or a Japanese or German or who knows. So uh, yes, we need to hear, to listen to different ways of speaking. The same language, yes, it's the same language, but uh, the way people from different countries and from different places around the world, they do speak it differently. Personally, when I was learning, it was very hard to understand at first people from India or Pakistan. 
because they do speak very fast and uh, they don't they have the tendency of not cutting one word and the other word they sort of like connect one word to the other and it sounds like one word even though it may be like three or four different words so uh it's hard but once you get to be with those people and you listen to them and they are patient with you because they are you ask them at the beginning pardon excuse me can you repeat but then you end up getting used to you accustom your hearing and then you start understanding them so uh yes i'm gonna try for that and we'll see next year it's going to be awesome it's going to be fun for next year but this year you have a uh, you have a task to accomplish it's for your own good you need to practice so i like this web page a lot uh, i just found it but i loved it because it has a lot of examples and like what we're talking about is about speaking and conversation i gave you the web page going straight to the dialogues and you have the business english dialogues here uh it has several different dialogues like for example improving brand image telephone in english remember that we talked about that last time disputing an electricity bill getting a driver's license telephone banking job interview examples and so on and it has a bigger a higher level in english it has several of them if we go to page number two let me show you because i, I saw a pretty cool here one like happy shareholders uh discussing ideas at a meeting looking for a bookkeeper what you're doing what's in your office placing an order like if you are uh buying something let's go and watch what is there i'm just gonna click in one i'm just showing you these different places from from you you and bun i don't know if i'm pronouncing it correct because remember that this um is not English but the content is all English and it's really good. Uh, in some of the exercises, when you click on them over here, it gives you a lot of exercises. You just have to go and, and take a look at all of what they have. Some of them have videos that you can watch and listen to them also. And some of them have just the conversation where you can just read it, pronounce it. It has the key vocabulary, that you need to know it to be able to understand the context of it. And it also has a quiz. So you can examine yourself, you can grade your own self by learning about the conversation, the topic, and then take the quiz. Isn't it great? I loved it. Okay, so let's move on to the second web page that I'm well, second and third is not just a web page. I remember that I told you that it's from WordPress and they are blogs. So uh, the first blog is about technical English, English for engineer, and it has games and it has worksheets. And it's a lot of vocabulary. I loved it. I love this a lot. I have some of the worksheets that they have over here. And Actually, the first worksheet of a vocabulary that we are going to be using next semester in January is from here. Uh, I gathered from here, but a few years ago. So the, the link is not uh, directly from here, but um, it's somewhere around here. I, I will have to go through the, the, the blog again and go on here and there, but, uh, but yes. The, the uh, vocabulary that, that we work in at the beginning of the semester comes from here. And then um, it has lots of interesting things like abbreviations like this. Let's just click in here. So it takes you to a different web page using English.com. And it gives you abbreviations and you can learn from it like 2D, 3D, 5G. Uh, we, we, we listen to 5G a lot these days, which is the fifth generation technology. Um, some things like AC, the air conditioning, or AC, which is for alternating current. Things like 
BCC, which is blind carbon copy, and we use this in emails. When you are sending an email and if you don't want to uh, the other people to see the other addresses, you use the blank, the blind carbon copy. Uh, things like carbon copy, which is only a copy. Uh, things like, yes, CO2, you already know that, the carbon dioxide. Things like, uh, let me look for a harder one, like this, DAB, digital audio broadcasting, digital radio. Or things like EST, which is estimated. Um, things like FFWD, fast forward. It's used a lot. And yes, you're like, ah, what does fast forward mean? Yes, that's part of the vocabulary that we're going to be learning at the beginning of next semester. And we're going to be using it a lot. GPS, you already know what GPS means, global positioning system. HDMI. High definition multimedia interface, things like that. So, if we move on, move forward to the third uh, page that I'm recommending, which is also a blog from WordPress. It's English for engineering, mainly for engineering. You can go and click in these options like here. It's it goes straight to the vocabulary and certain things that you can be doing with that type of topic. Here, the topic is about building and measurements. Mainly that it should be related to civil engineering. Lithium ion batteries, this is for every engineer. Cars of the future, that's more sort of like what is related to you, industrial engineers. And of course, English for engineering describing a process which is a lot related to you, to what you are as an industrial engineer. And you click on it and it gives you a worksheet. So uh, it, it tells you examples, it tells you a little bit about store, uh, history, it gives you vocabulary, and then it gives you uh, exercises to work with, which is pretty cool. I, I, found, I find that there's a lot of information online, free, good information. Um, you just need to gather what is good for you because sometimes uh, you lose your time uh, Spend your time through, through places that you're not going to learn anything. I find that these are very, very nice. It's not super huge exercises. You can just go click on them, solve them, and then go to the next one and so on. So they do have some information over here. They also have about the job interview. If you want to start learning about the job interview, go and start learning about that. You can just go and click on it. It's all about knowing about yourself. It's about questions and it's about knowing how to answer. So moving forward to English lesson, business English from Curso de Inglés. Yes. I found personally, oh, I'm, I'm yelling, I'm screaming. I love this one. Let me see if I'm sharing my volume from my computer. Let's see. Uh, 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 share computer sound. Yes. Let's see. I love this one because it has some exercises for dialogue, but it also has the listening part. And it gets you, it moves you through it. So you can see the, uh, the exercise here, the conversation for being part of it. But then you can click on play. And you can listen to them. Francisco lives in Madrid and he sells Spanish wines to clients in the rest of Europe. One of his best clients is Anne Smith. She lives in London and she runs a wine distributor in the United Kingdom. Anne is planning a business trip to Madrid to meet with Francisco and visit a couple wineries to try out some new wines. So is explaining what's going to happen. Here is their telephone conversation regarding Anne's trip. Telephone conversation. Francisco. And it moves. Hi, Anne. How are you? I'm not touching. Anne. Very well, Francisco. How are you doing? Francisco. Fine, thanks. So, for what day have you booked your flight? Anne. My flight leaves London on the 14th of November at 9 a.m. I arrive in Madrid at noon. Shall I take a taxi to your office? 
Francisco. Yes, that sounds great. I would offer to pick you up, but I have another meeting that morning. Anne. Oh, that's no problem. I don't mind taking a taxi. Francisco. Where are you staying? Anne. Okay, and so on. So as you can see, it's uh, for me, it's like really nice. It's really good to find places like that where you can practice once and again and again. You can play it and go back and play stop and play again. And this is just one lesson. I use this link so you can go straight to that lesson. But if you go over here, you can go to the next lesson, which is it continues about business English dialogues. You can go back to vocabulary and usual expressions. You can use all of the resources that they offer you here. References, vocabulary, more expressions, quotes, some more tools. And about practicing, you can improve and you can, you have grammar exercises here. There are songs that you can uh, find there. So uh, there is a lot of resources. I'm only recommending this few, but you may find the ones of your preferences. I'm gathering my phone because I want to show you something. There is also a an app. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. It's from it's over here. It's called English Conversation. I know that Professor Israel also uh, recommends this one. This app gives you the chance to oh, it doesn't show well. Uh, 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 okay. But, well, that's the intention. Let me just uh, stop. Choose uh, the virtual background not to show. Known. Ah! So you can see. Now, um, here. I'm showing you what it has. It has several different conversations. And it's called English Conversation. This app is really cool. You can just go and click on it. Like for example, uh, eating related topics, trip, vacations, daily life. Let's see, daily life. Daily life and you have several different categories. You choose one, for example, fixing the car. So you click on it and then, uh, well, since it's free, you're going to have some, um, there's going to be some offers on it, but we don't mind. We can just go and skip on it, skip it, right? So it's it's fine for us. We can just skip it and keep going. So uh, we say close, and then it gives you the conversation. You can see it over there. Yes. So it says like here you have John, Sam, John and Sam, and it's about fixing the car. But look at what the interesting part of this. It has listening, it has a quiz, it has a practice, and it has a place to record. You can also record your own self. And so if we go and click on it, you can start listening. And then at the end, you have the, the option to record your own self, which is pretty awesome. I found it like very, very nice. So you can just go and, and choose that. Let us listen to this one. This is about uh, two people. One needs to repair the, the car. So I'm gonna just put the volume a little higher and I'm gonna show you the conversation here. You just click on play. Hey, Sam, you're home. Where's your car? Oh, hey, John, it's in the auto shop. Again? What's wrong with it this time? I'm not sure. It's making a lot of strange noises. That's weird. It's not even an old car. I know. I've only had it for... Th so we can just uh, go and listen to it. And then once we practice a lot, you have the options, which is pretty cool. This is, you can choose to be John or Sam. In this case, it's two men and I'm a woman, but it doesn't matter. It's about practicing. And once you choose, then you can start recording yourself and the application is going to be the other person and you can just practice with the other person. And for example, if I choose to be John, then Sam needs to answer to me. 
and then it's going to tell me when to start recording. So I click on it to record. Hey, Sam, you're home. Where's your car? Oh, hey, John. It's in the auto shop. Again? What's wrong with it this time? I'm not sure. It's making a lot of strange noises. That's weird. It's not even an old car. I know. I've only had it for three years. My mechanic doesn't know what the problem is. You see? You can just practice with the other person, which is there, in your phone. And then uh, I didn't record the whole thing, but it's asking me if I want to keep the dialogue. I'm going to say yes. And then... Hey, Sam. You're home. Where's your car? Oh, hey, John. It's in the auto shop. You see, that was me. Again? What's wrong with it this time? I'm not sure. It's making a lot of strange noises. That's weird. It's not even an old car. I know. I've only had it for three years. My mechanic doesn't know what the problem is. You see, this is an awesome tool. It's called, the application is just called like that, English conversation. And it's pretty awesome. It has several different topics that you can use and you can learn a lot of our conversations through this uh, app. So I'm strongly recommending you uh, free up some space in your phone, uh, get some space and learn something which is really, really, really good. All right, so um, with that said, I'm gonna just say the sad part of this class. We have finished the semester. It's over now. I'm very glad I've been honored to be teaching, teaching you this semester because I found that you are a really good group. You, Abilities in English are very good at this point. You have a lot of knowledge and you have been practicing. It might be a little bit, but you are, your attitude towards the class is really good. So I want to encourage you to keep doing that and to keep working on your language, to keep working on learning the English and to keep getting better. Like you see, this class was most of it about recommending you and to letting you know what's going on in reality, what you're gonna be doing in your real life as a normal regular person and as for your personal life and also for your professional life. So you need to remember that part. English is going to be part of your life for the rest of your life. Awesome, isn't it? Great. All right, so uh, I'm so glad. Thank you very much for being part of this class, for staying since August to December. Thank you very much for staying until the end. I know it has been hard because of the pandemic and because we have to be through a computer this time, but still we have learned and we know that we can learn. And if we have the opportunity to keep learning and to keep growing as a person, and if we could take the opportunity, that's awesome. That's great. The opportunities are here and we're taking them. Thank you very much. Uh, again, I'm glad. I'm so happy that I was part of your class of your semester this year. And I'll be happy to have you next year too. We'll see each other if nothing changes. Like, because normally I'm the one who teaches this class. So uh, I'll be glad to see you again in January in the second class, in the second English seminar or Seminario Conversación Inglés.